Alrighty, so here we have an exercise. Play through this once, it's pretty short. There you go. And then you have questions about how to improve body mechanics, uh, question about reference, and also a rig control questions. I'm gonna answer all this in this here. Um, people might be interested in those answers. So also prefacing, you're saying that the shot is still linear, um, because I was gonna comment on things like here, right here, right? You can see how it goes. So that would be a linear key, how that root moves out this way. So, but you are aware of this and probably have some other things, but I'm going to just mention everything that I'm seeing um, just in case you're not aware or just as a checklist. The main thing that I'm seeing here is that okay, overall, it's good. I like it. There's, there's some good anticipation. There's good weight shift. So as you lift this leg, you want to lean over a bit for balance. If you wouldn't move the body, the body would fall over this way. Then you have a reach moving over. You might argue that you could even do the same thing where you go a bit further with the body with a counter rotation there um, with maybe a more of a stretch of the leg. And then as he straightens himself out, he gets back into uh, a straight pose. So you have a bit of an overshoot then come back in the body. But if you watch this right now, it's not too bad because it's not, he's not doing a really fast move over. But you could explore something where on that way up, the body is a bit more out this way. And then as he settles, the root moves over into this position. Not a shot breaker, but potentially something you could explore. The main thing that I would say, there's, there's two approaches to the hips. And I'm not going to talk about the uh, control just yet. That's a different issue. When you lift this leg when this leg gets off the ground all the weight is on this that's the weight bearing leg right so that means that technically the pelvis would be like this so you can lift this up however you want but all the weight is on on the right side leg which means that it's going to push up the pelvis into this position i'm exaggerating the angle but that's the idea and then as you go over here here it's flat or rotated over depending on your rotation, how you, you bring out that leg. But once you get onto here, like the moment this is off, then we're having a bit more of an angle like this, which is good. But especially as you lift here, we're straightening out here and I would have a bit of a more pronounced angle of those hips. Again, I'm exaggerating, but you know, that's kind of the idea that you want your weight shift and whatever leg is bearing all the weight is going to push that side of the hip up. That's in a more realistic fashion. Also then as you level out, then you can go back to having straighter um, hips. So if I look at this, I feel like you could push that aspect of the hips more. Now, there is an argument that the more cartoonier you go, that if you lift this leg up, that you can lift up this side of the hips it just becomes more exaggerated and it just depends on the style you're going for and i think that could be this could be two things you could explore right so you have maybe this one is more on the realistic side in terms of well you lift this off the ground then there's more pressure here so the hips go up this way and then later on if you do another exercise you can go well let me just be a bit more cartoony with you know broader weight shifts and bringing this leg up and because of that the hips go up this way you know that then you can start having a few more exaggerated poses and then exploring uh you know the relationship between the the hips and the shoulders i think that would be my advice there in terms of details something i'd be careful about is overstretching ik legs Oop, right there you're starting to overstretch you can see how you're starting to lift the foot especially the toe area as well which in this case needs to be uh, flat on the ground because all the weight is on it you might argue well maybe a foot roll as he needs to reach over that's fine as long as that front part is flat because all the weight is on it so i'll be careful with overstretching your leg the other thing is as all of this is moving this way you can see how the foot is straight up and then the leg is doing this so at this point what you want to do is you want to rotate over the ankle 
and pivoting off this side of the shoe. So if this is, you know, the front view and you got your sole and this is your shoe or foot, whatever, it feels like this. This is your knee and then this is the thigh. <laughs> My awesome drawing. This is the look of it. But what I would shoot for is something that's more like this, right? Knee and then thigh, whatever. So that as your body is going this way, your foot is starting to get pulled this way and it's pivoting off of this corner of the uh, sole, shoe, you know, boot, whatever you have. And in that way, it's a bit more aligned with the shin, right? Let's go fancy here, change colors so that you don't have this feeling. That broken aspect here. Let's go even more fancy with a different color so that it's, you can still have a bit of a bend, but it's still a bit more aligned with the leg if that makes sense. Switching back to the super aggressive red. <laughs> so I'll watch out for that. I see the overstretching there and then you would uh, lean over, rotate over that foot. And again, I know you were saying sh a shot is a linear and stuff like that. I'm just, you know, commenting on things. Maybe people are watching this online they might find that helpful too. Excuse me, we got a bit of a heat wave here. Potential allergies coming in. And you can see here, if you scrub, and I put some onion skinning on this. Hold on, let me delete the rest here. Right before this, you can put the line on that shoulder. And you can see how it's moving a little bit over. And then, boop, and then you got that, that broad move from here to here, right? And before that, you're pretty much in the same spot. So watch out. As you spline this out. Now let's pretend you would ease out of that and as you spline this, right? And you move a bit faster. You might even still consider moving the head back this way for this will dramatically increase your drag overlap. But that way maybe you can get rid of this constant angle. It's a bit locked there in this pose. So even if it's not fully, you can still relax the head a bit into more neutral pose maybe even a bit of a drag and then boom then by now you reach this so there's a bit more of an overlappy aspect and again this is just an exercise you can always push the drag overlap and then you can always reduce it but just kind of just to go full on with with the ideas and watch out again i mean there's a bit of a lock there in the knee then i see this foot coming up here it doesn't look like you're overstretching the leg though so I don't know if you have an extra control that's on, if that's the look of tilting over this side now, and that's why this is off the ground. Feels like it at the end here. I think I'm seeing a pivot. I don't mind those details towards the end. Uh, I would just get all the, the root and hip stuff done first. But I like the idea of offsetting and rotations, especially like if let's say if this foot comes down, you can see that it's pretty horizontal as it comes down. So even on, in this case, you would, that's the ground, the foot would come down like that, right? Imagine this is your, these are the angles of the leg. Well, the foot seems flat. So I would rotate this over. So it lands first on this edge and then flatten into this pose. And maybe the recovery here is a bit pendulum like a bit warring or it's a it's a bit much it's a bit slow and wavy war or but something just to kind of tone down again the idea is right it just feels a bit spliny and soft there that being said the moment you put in your arms that's going to change things as well you have to just be mindful that this might be one way because that's all you're seeing but the moment the moment you add arms well, the weight might be a bit different or the angle of, you know, maybe he's he is doing this because he wants to sidestep to say hi to someone. Um, just be mindful of whatever you're doing with the arms might change the timing and the posture and the rest of the body there. Now, you are asking, uh, how can I improve the body mechanics? So here's something I would do. If we take uh, any type of rig, right? I've got something here in Maya. So the main thing you have to remember that every body part influences the rest of the body. So if I move up her arm like this, you can see how 
the shoulder gets affected there, which is good. But the common mistake is that people usually do this. They move an arm up like that. But again, if you if I move an arm up, then you have to think about, well, that's going to influence the shoulder. But if that influences the shoulder, it's going to probably also move over the rest of the body. But because of that, it's going to have to somewhat have an influence on the neck. And I can't see the controls here. This is geometry. No, this is the neck. All right. So you might want to overcompensate with that. And if you're moving everything over, well, there might be a little bit of a change in the route this way. You might go a bit further with that. That might potentially change the leg because you have maybe other the hips because one leg is out like that but that and so on and so on but the main thing is that if you are moving an arm for instance you want to make sure that it's not just like this right so any body part will influence the rest same thing if i say if i move my head over like this just feels weird right it's say i move it over this way well if the top part is moving it's gonna influence the rest of it a bit more but because i'm moving the head over it's also going to move the chest a bit right so you're going to reduce the head rotation a bit but move the chest over it's almost like there is an influence rate of if i move this it's going to influence the rest of the body to some degree right so if i move my let's go erase this here and if i move my arm it's going to influence the shoulder but because of that it's going to influence the chest to some degree and to some degree the head and down 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 trickle down into uh, the legs probably not so much here unless you do a weight shift that puts more weight on this and you're going to adjust the feet for some polish but that is the main thing i would think about when you do anything in terms of body mechanics you're also talking about that your reference was maybe a bit too subtle i mean you can go hardcore and wear something where you do see you know, arm lines, body lines, maybe something to line up here so you can see what, you know, your hips are doing, what your body's doing, what your arms are doing. I don't know where you would find that to buy. Um, not that you want to buy a mocap suit and just have, you know, the tracking markers, but I like suits with lines like this. Actually, I actually had a hard time Googling. Uh, I looked for body line t-shirts or something. If anybody has any comments about that. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, you can always get a really you know, old t-shirt that you have. And with a marker, just draw lines, right, on the major, major parts. And then you can see the rotations and how your body moves. There's nothing, you know, why not? You can always look for reference like that and kind of analyze your body movements like that. So going back to this. So again, this is question number two, you shot yourself, uh, shot yourself, you, you shot reference. Um, it was very hard to analyze because it was too subtle. So yes. Uh, anything where you act out broader moves for sure but you know sometimes it's also you acting out and it's you are you are feeling how the hips are moving or how this relationship is and it's maybe less of analyzing footage but also realizing oh when i move like this it feels more like that maybe i should change it into whatever it is right now you're also asking about the pelvis control you know that's kind of depending on your workflow some people would move the root rotate everything over so that is the angle or move the root only in a translate and the rotation over with the body is done by the upper body controls and the hips are doing that type of stuff where right? same with you know if you will go up here and the hips are angled this way for weight shifts to me it's kind of i kind of go like that i sometimes do and i understand the problem with counter animating um i usually do main movements with the root and then more subtle influences and weight shifts with a separate pelvis control. Uh, now we do have different rigs at work. So for us, it's always kind of a, we have a box here that we can translate. It's kind of a, a spline rig, but we can still rotate things in terms of almost like an, uh, an FK control. So I can just pose out the line of action you know, of the upper body. I don't really have to worry about five separate spine controls like that i'm not a massive fan of those just because you, it can get very complicated in terms of well did i move this one did i also move this one or did i just move this and this did i forget the middle one oh wait i moved these too much i got a counter with this it gets a bit too complicated uh, and i like having a setup where i can post things out very quickly and then at the end i mean again we have a controller but 
there's an inner controller here. We have multiple controls within controls. So I can block things out quickly in terms of line of action and then have inner controls for, again, for hips and shoulders on IK and stuff like that. Um, it's a very effective rig in terms of speed. Um, but of course, none of that helps you. My approach is doing broader things with the big controllers and then using the pelvis control for weight shifts and not doing weight shifts depending on the leg position with the roots that will then change, you know, however the, the, the body looks or where the body is oriented. I think that to me is too much. And then, like you said, you have to start counter animating with spine controls. That's way too much work for me. So you could just do that main stuff with the root for main body controls. It's it's very stiff. Yeah. But it could work and then you add your in your in, with your separate controllers the proper spine angle. I mean it really kind of depends on what you prefer workflow wise. But since you know that could be confusing, you could start off with just main movements in translates with the roots and then do the rest with spine controls on something like this. I think this is not too complex where it gets too complicated that you add all those uh, controls in, in it. Um, the main thing you want to do is find a workflow for you where you move the least amount of controls to get the best pose. Now, again, I mean, it's, the workflows are so, so, um, you know, it's just so personal. It's not intimate, but you know, it's it's however you prefer working. And for something like this, probably I will personally do the route that actually moves the whole body like this. Don't touch the hips though. So everything is like that. And then use maybe the top two rotations to get that angle the way you have it here. And then continue on with this, where it's the main thing is the route. And then the top two, not really worry about the lower ones because the rib cage is up here moving everything. And this just kind of follows. And whatever controls you have here, you can do for final line and and, uh, and silhouette. And then afterwards, when you're done, when you do the detail stuff on footfalls and weight shifts, then go the separate pelvis control uh, as long as the, the pivot is in the middle here. And then adjust the weight shifts there. That is what I would do. I hope this was of help. This is a longer critique on a more uh, short exercise but hopefully that was helpful as always if not let me know via email and we can continue the discussion there all right thank you all right there's an email you can sign up you can start whenever you want you can submit whatever you want you get 16 submissions either way a like and subscribe would be awesome all right thank you